I'm Bibi Nicole, owner of DHG Hair Studio, and today I'm going to be giving you guys a couple of tips on how to pick your neck stylist. We're going to go over doing your research. We're going to also go over picking out someone with a specialty that you're looking for. We're going to consider the age group of the stylist. We're going to consider the salon environment, their personality, as well as their pricing. So if you're interested in getting a couple of tips from me, stay tuned and make sure you thumbs up this video and share it with your friends. And if you find it helpful, subscribe and come back for future content. You guys stay dope. I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, how to pick your stylist. Number one, the most important thing I'm going to say is research. Do your research. Um, you need to look on their social media. They should have social media. You can go on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Everything that you can think of, really research. Um, because one thing about social media, it tells exactly who a person really is. You know, you don't have to get all into their personal stuff. Most likely they have, like, a business page, you know, because really you're looking for a service from them. You're not necessarily looking for, like, a best friend. If that does become of it, you know, that's great. But you're looking for someone to service you and offer you what you're looking for. So do your research, you know, it's really good to have a website. It's really good to have pictures. And in those pictures, you can look for consistency with their work, meaning that they don't like hit or miss. If they have a bunch of color, all the color looks good. If they do a lot of natural hair, all the natural hair looks healthy and looks well taken care of. Um, and if they do extensions, they do their extensions look natural or really pretty every time you know make sure they have pictures also you want to look at reviews reviews are very very helpful i always encourage my clients to write reviews even though sometimes they do not i ask them to write reviews because of this very reason when people are searching and looking they want to hear about what other people think of them i can say that i'm great all day but if no one else around thinks you're so great, then they're probably not going to come to you. So reviews are important. If you are a stylist, get people hip to writing reviews. So that'll really help you out in the future. So after you've done your research, at this point, you should know what they specialize in. After you've done your research, you should get a good idea, a general idea of what they offer, what services they offer, and what they do really well. A lot of stylists are very well-rounded, um, and some people are specialty only. You know, if you have a very a set look or a set type of styling that you want, you're going to be better off going to someone who specializes in that thing that you're looking for. If you're, some stylists do everything, and, and some stylists only do one thing that does I hope that does make a difference. Uh, even though I kind of do, I do kind of everything, but I am gearing more towards extensions. I'm branding as an extension bar, but I can do a lot of things. But this is where my passion is, and this is where um, I enjoy, this is where, you know, what I enjoy the most. The salon environment. Usually, this is on the website. You can see the salon, you can see the reviews, but... This is one of the things what you are going to, when you're going to kind of have to go through it to decide if it's for you. Um, you have shop styles and you have upscale salons. Just see where you fit into that category. Um, environment, I say, is like 50-50. Sometimes it's 100%. It just depends on the type of person you are because you can have a really, really great stylist and a not-so-great environment, but her people still come to her and then you could have a really great stylist but her environment is um horrible but it is not so much as who she is as a person but the place where you have to go is just not what you were expecting you have to decide you know so stylists consider that when you're looking to bring your clients somewhere i think that is so important and also clients um when you find your stylist, just make sure you're comfortable in the environment. You got to know who you are as a person and know where you fit in. You know what I mean? So when you pick that, you'll know, I think, by the end of your visit or immediately. Sometimes you might have an um, idea 
of what it's going to be like when you get in there. Like, But it turns out to be totally different or vice versa, you know. So you might come there and you're like, no. But then you're like, okay, it's not so bad. You know what I mean? Or you might go there and you're like, yeah, I found the place. And then it's like, what just happened? Age group is very important, but it is not. However, it is not like a final like deciding factor. Um, if you want someone trendy and current, you might want to go to the younger crowd. A lot of people have been with their stylist so long, but their stylist hasn't has not evolved so they kind of outgrown their stylist and you know they you get the people who say you know i wanted to stay with this person but they could not do this or they could not do that or every time i wanted to do something new they could not do it you're either going to look for someone trendy or younger or someone who is very very up to date with the new trends in education so age factor and i guess Continued education look for someone who really really believes in continued education or look for someone young and trendy And it's not saying that all older well-seasoned stylists are not up to date That's not what I'm saying What I'm saying is if you are with someone who are not is not keeping up with the times then it's time for you to move on <laughs> Another Factor you want to consider when choosing your stylist is their personality. I cannot stress this enough we are not all for each other <laughs> um you know everybody is not compatible you really have to choose that wisely because you want to be comfortable you're going to be spending an awful lot of time with this person you want to make sure that it's pleasant throughout you don't want anyone that you're going to be annoyed by you don't want anyone that you're going to be uncomfortable with um so their personality should it should it should fit yours um i'm a bubbly person you know my clients have no problem with my personality um most people are adaptable like i can kind of figure out and fill out what type of client i have and they're um you know if i'm giving off too much energy or if i'm not giving off enough you know i'm just always myself but you know it's okay to bring it back you know what i mean so yeah i'm bubbly that's what you get when you deal with me but I'm also very professional and number one, you're going to know what's important when you sit in my chair and that's your hair and that's making sure that you're comfortable and making sure that you are pleased. Okay, so the last deciding factor you want to consider when trying to find a new stylist is going to be pricing. That is very important because, you know, you have to know your range, you know what you're willing to spend and um, sometimes you think you won't spend something or you think you should spend this amount and then you get an experience and then you're like, oh my God, okay, I see why it's worth it. So don't always go for the cheapest or go for the highest. It's more about the experience, the quality of the service and the actual education and skill of that stylist and also professionalism of that stylist. If you are not used to paying certain pricing, it can come off offensive when you go into a salon that you're referred to or you go to a person that you're referred to and you love the person's hair or you love what they do or how they, you know, make everyone look. And then, you know, they let you know, hey, this is what I offer. This is what you're going to get. This is how we're going to take care of your hair. This is where we are. This is what we're trying to go. We're going to get you there. This is the pricing. And then you're like, Oh, I'm not, oh, you know, I'm not paying that or, you know, you know, or I can go here for that price, etc. It is offensive. Do your research. Most people, you don't want to be offensive and stylists shouldn't be offensive to clients either. Like I never handled that in a messy way or anything because I'm content, you know, I feel like stylists set their price in and they know what their price is and they're content with it. You know, they know what they're worth. Um, or some are still figuring it out. Whatever the case, you know, try not to come off as offensive. Um, know what they charge. Ask. You know, don't don't charge. You say, oh, you should charge this or so and so charges that or whatever. It's just like this is what they charge. Try it out. If it doesn't work, don't go back. If it's worth it, you're like, okay, not and you get the experience and you understand why the pricing is what it is. If it's just something you can't pay for. Go to another, go to somewhere in your range. That is not offensive at all. It's like, okay, and that's why, you know, research is so important. You know what they're charging. You see their work, you know what they're charging, and you're like, okay, you have an idea. And the worst thing you can do is have the pricing in front of you, have it told to you on the phone or, you know, laid out to you, and then you come in like, oh, what's the price? 
okay then they tell you then you're like oh no that's too high you should have done your research well enough to know their pricing so so again so you don't come off as offensive know the price range a lot of places have set prices a lot of places have um starting prices some places have add-on services some people have you know this is bundled in everyone is different no professional is the same period we are all different we have different skill sets we have different specialties we are in different um um demographics it's like don't don't go to a stylist saying this is what they charge this is what you should that's the don't do it you know i handle that well i'm good but everybody is not that is offensive <laughs> Um, and another thing, and just throwing this out there for stylists, let people know up front what you charge, like, like, oh, this is what you want, this is what you want, this is what it's going to cost. Let them decide. Don't, you know, don't blindside them, but if you have gotten in my chair, if you have gotten in a stylist's chair, you should have done the research and you should know the price. That, like, you should know that. That's something you should know immediately during, con like, you should, like, a, a good stylist is going to tell you from the jump. This is what we're doing. This is what you're getting. This is how I'm going to take care of you. This is what it's going to cost. What do you want to do? Because a good stylist is not going to pressure you and they are not going to spend your money for you. They are not going to do all these things and say, this is the price. Like, wait, you didn't ask me. You know, none of that is going to happen because a good stylist is going to let you know up front. They're going to break it down. They're going to be detailed and you're going to know pricing. And on your part, to be a responsible client, you should know the pricing before you go there. That's very important. And just so everyone is comfortable throughout the situation, just know. Don't be, you should never be uncomfortable to ask. But you should definitely not try not to be offensive, you know. So I think that's all, you know. Again, just to go over when you're picking your new stylist, just remember to research them, do a lot of research, know their specialty, pick an age group that you're comfortable with, um, be okay with the salon environment after you've done all those other steps. When you get to the actual salon, make sure that environment is suitable for you. Um, make sure the stylist personality matches your own. It doesn't have to match, but make sure you're compatible. Um, and make sure that the pricing is in a range that you are comfortable with. That wraps up this video on how you are going to pick your next stylist. So, I hope you guys found this video very helpful. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope I've given you some good feedback. I tried to keep it short and to the point, so if you want to know a little bit more, drop those comments below. Also, tell me about your experience on how you found your stylist, and also if you have a little bit more advice to add on to this video, leave that below. People will be watching and people will be reading, so if you have something to add, drop it below. I'll make sure I check it out. Um, so thank you guys for stopping by, and if you guys want a part two, let's get these likes up, let's get these shares, and let's get the conversation going below. I hope you guys have an amazing day. Thanks for stopping by, and remember to stay dope. All right, until next time, I'll see you guys later. Bye.